Welcome to the Wealthy Trades Daily Market Forecast for May 13th, 2015. Let's get rolling right away. Uh, this is a crazy market, as crazy as we are watching paint dry, right? Uh, as an active trader, it's a frustrating market because it's not going anywhere. Um, that is, I guess, if you're a trend trader, it can be somewhat frustrating in this market. If you're an oscillating trader, it's uh, it's fairly decent. And that's the thing. There are multiple uh, market environments that we are in, and we can't be in both at the same time or there's technically three there's an oscillating market which is exactly what we're in right now um, which doesn't surprise me because you know we've been in a trending market for a while so we're in an oscillating market which means we're kind of bumping around going up and down tight ranges and that's typically followed by increases in volatility and then back into a trend okay so what I believe is we've been oscillating I'm looking at the spy right here we've been oscillating for a long time in fact I was looking at some some squeeze techniques I use some squeeze techniques in my portfolio what it, what that means is essentially when the market gets really really tight in tight ranges the one thing I know for sure and that's never failed is low volatility very tight range markets are always always followed by high volatility okay and you can go back in history and see this low tight ranges followed by high high volatility uh you know you see it back in 2008 2009 you see it back you know in 2011 2012 that's the case all the time so we go from oscillating to volatility to increase volatility back into a trend and so right now we are i believe getting close to the end of uh, an oscillating market we've been in this oscillating market for a while it's like it's like uh twisting a rubber band imagine that he's twisting 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 two of your rubber band together eventually that rubber band is going to snap and that snap is a dramatic increase in volatility a lot of times that snap initially is to the downside um because the fear comes in different things like that but ultimately as we know the market does have a tendency uh, not has a tendency does in fact go up over time but we will see and this is the one thing that, that scares me a, a little bit about the current market environment the longer we go through this um, rally and kind of oscillating market environment I think some people are, are going to get in the mindset of being complacent meaning th because the returns haven't been all that great over the last six seven months they might think oh well now the market might go back into normalized returns well here's the thing we will eventually see another um, correction which is technically defined as a, as a 10 percent sell-off within the market and we will see another bear market we haven't been in a bear market uh, now since um, 2011 we went into a bear market uh, for just ever so sh such a short short amount of time back in uh, August September 2011 but we've we've been a, it's been a long time since we've seen a true correction too. In fact, this might be one of the longest times in history since we've seen a correction. So we've got a lot of things happening right now that are kind of lining up um, that I believe we're going to get a big move in one of the directions. And I've said uh, if we close above 212 um, on a daily basis, we close above 212. I think that's going to establish and set up a rally uh, to 230. 235, so 2300, 2350 in the S&P 500. On the flip side, if we close below 204, I think we're going to see kind of a, 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 a deep selling pressure take us down to about 180 or 1800 in the S&P 500. And because the fact that we're coming out of, we have a very low volatility environment, the volatility index is trading at uh, very low levels, we're in a very tight, very, very tight market range. And I think complacency is fairly high. We can see a very big move soon. So here's the way I'm going to play it. And this is um, a little off, uh, the, off, off the reservation a little bit compared to what I normally do with the Wealthy Trades dashboard. But the way I'm going to play it is because options pricing right now, the premium that you're paying uh, to buy calls and puts, uh, even long dated calls and puts, is very cheap. Uh, in fact, you know, if you have a portfo portfolio that's typically long right now, you should look to probably buy some protection. Uh, I believe that in these environments when we have really big runs up, uh, runs uh, higher like we've had over the last three, four years, and we're sitting here bumping around all time highs, right now is a great time to lock in some of those profits or sacrifice some of the upside by buying some insurance, by buying some puts, insure your portfolio. But here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to actually let the market, and I'm going to do this in a, in a portion of my longer term portfolio, I'm going to let the market kind of dictate where I go. And that, what I mean by that is, what I like is, if the market breaks above 212, so the SPY breaks above 212, 
um, then I like going out to the end of the year. So the, December 31st, those are the last day of the year. Calls are trading for very, uh, pretty inexpensive. I think you can pick them up at the time that we break. I think you'll be able to pick those up for probably around 8 to $10, which means we essentially need about a 4% rally higher for those to be uh, to actually have uh, real intrinsic value. Now, on the other side, if we break 204, I actually like the December 31st, the end of the year puts. Okay, because again, the volatility on those is is very low. And as I said, if we break 212 on the upside, I think we're heading to before the end of the year. I think we're heading to 230, 235, which means that if you buy those, uh, let's say you buy the 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 two uh, two twelves calls out to the end of the year for 10 bucks well we go to 235 then you know those those two those are worth now 23 dollars you 10 into 23 on the, on the other side if you if you we break 204 you buy the 204s for let's say 10 bucks and we go to 180 now those are worth 24 dollars so i like that trade a lot because I, again we're in such a tight and tight range and i think we break that 212 we head much higher we break the 204 we head much lower that is the way that i'm going to play this and uh in my long long term uh in, in long term portfolio with what uh, what is the way to play that is look at the monthly dashboard and go with the flow. As I said yesterday, we are long in the XLV and CAH. And right now you're thinking, geez, well, those are, you know, the XLV is about break even, but they're not performing all that well because the market's been kind of bumping around and not doing much over the last month, month and a half, two months. And that's okay because what will happen is eventually if this market does start to roll over, then it's going to take a big down move before we go into a confirmed monthly downtrend, but the trend quality could very well be below 50% next month. In fact, rolling into May, I thought we were going to be below 50% in, in May. Um, actually, this was in, in, uh, in late February. I thought we were going to be below 50% for, for March and April because... The uh, the market had, if you remember, the market had actually, this was in March, the market had actually sold off early March uh, and it was not looking bullish at all. And then late March, it started rallying aggressively and it actually brought that trend quality for April above 50%. That could happen again this May. Um, but what I'm thinking is if we, if the current market environment kind of stays where it's at, we bump along these levels and we don't get any big rally, then this trend quality will be below 50% and we'll start to do some hedge trades, okay? So that's the nice thing about the Wealthy Trades dashboard is it guides you in the direction that you should go. Not only in the direction, but in the best sectors and then it tells you it's your gauge on should you protect your positions or not and that's very very powerful so let's talk about in on the weeklies um, we are long in the consumer staples and kr is the stock that we are long it's about break even not doing bad but today what we're going to do is we are have a long bias but talking about that trend quality it's below 50 percent so what we want to do is we want to uh, look to go long in the best sector and that's the material sector and then we're going to short in the worst sector. So we're going to do a pairs trade. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring all these into my portfolio. I'm just hitting the plus symbol next to all of them. Those are the eight best stocks. So what does that tell me? Market's moving up. Uh, quality's not that good. But if I were just to go long today, the material sector is the best sector to go long in because it has the most stocks moving up and the highest momentum. But let's find the best stock, the best one stock to go long in today in the material sector. So now I clicked on my portfolio, which is the middle tab. And I'm going to go and I'm going to drill down and we're going to find the best opportunity. The first filtering tool I'm going to use is the levels to win profit. Anything that doesn't make money on both sides, I'm going to eliminate. So NEM, for example, loses money historically when it hits this counter trend level. It's counter trend expected level today is 26.34. When it hits that, it typically loses money. So let's say you were long NEM today. Well, putting a stop at 26.34 is the way to go. Why? Because... I know historically that loses money, so I'm I'm going to take a stop there if I go long NEM. But I'm going to not go long NEM. I'm going to look for the best opportunity here. So I'm just going to filter through, eliminate anything that doesn't make money. So AA, buy. ATI, eliminate. Just flipping through here. Okay, so all of these make money. So now the second filtering technique is I'm going to look at the levels to win spread. So I want to see a high number on the trend side and a low number on the counter trend side. So I want a wide spread here. The spread is, you know, what, about 11.5% uh, or so. And, well, MON is more than NUN, uh, NUE. So Monsanto is better because it's got a 30 and 17. 
Well, that's better than a 26. And, uh, well, no, actually, I, I'm, I'm sorry, it's not. So 30 and 17 is still about 13. This is uh, FCX is better than Monsanto. <coughs> 30 and 17 isn't as good as 26 and 11. So FCX is better than that. BLL is 26 and 21. That's not as good as 26 and 11. So eliminate that. And then the uh, XLB itself is 30 and 13. And that is better than 26 and 11. So XLB is going to be, in fact, our best long position today. Okay. So, but we need to pair that. And the reason why we need to pair that with something is because the trend quality of the market is not above 50%. So the best sector to short, and this shouldn't surprise anybody, rates have been moving higher. And uh, the XLU, which is very a rate sensitive sector, has been getting sold off uh, right now. And I think it will probably continue to get sold off if rates continue to trend higher, which again, they're coming off of a very low base. So expecting them to go higher is probably a pretty, pretty safe bet. But there's been a lot of people who have expected rates to go higher over the last two years that have lost a lot of money taking that trade um, or lost a lot of patience. They didn't lose money, they lost patience. But now let's go, these are all the stocks in the XLU. Let's use our paradigm technique, find anything that doesn't make money and get it out of there. So PNW, get that out of there. Uh, going through this a little fast, that's okay. Uh, DTE, get that out of there. EIX, get that out of here, out of there. Okay, so these are the ones. So now let's look at the spread. 40 and 7. Wow, that's probably going to be pretty hard to beat. 48 and 11. Wow, okay. Well, you know what? Uh, what do we got here? We got uh, 33, and then we've got, yeah. So tag is better than WEC. So 48 and 11 is better than 36 and 13. Better than 36 and 13. Better than 28 and 13. And better than 34 and 11. So our short is going to be TEG. So what do we know about TEG? Well, it closed at 71.32. Its trend side expected low is 70.70. Its upside expectation is 71.94. It hits the trend side on a Wednesday in a downtrend, TEG, 67% of the time. That's a great area to short at too, all right? 70.70 is a great shorting area because it makes a lot of money by shorting there. And it has a very pretty high probability of closing below that level that's a teg is a great short we're going to pair that with a long position in xlb i'm going to go long xlb um and i'm going to close both of these at the end of the day so long xlb short teg at the open close at the end of the day that is our day trade for our weekly trade we are still long in kr and on our monthly trade we're long the xlv and cah so and as I told you, what I'm looking for in the SPY, I'm looking for a break above 212. Been looking for this for a while, break above 212 or below 204. And when that happens, I'm going to look to go out to the end of the year and uh, buy either the put if we break below 204 or the calls, just the at the money calls and at the money puts, uh, at the money calls if we break above 212. So let me know if you have any questions. Email me, info at wealthytrades.com. Again, don't let your trial expire. $74 a month, steal to understand where the market's moving, best sectors to go into, and uh, and how to manage your portfolio. Again, info at wealthytrades.com. Email me if you have any questions. Thanks.